child with a clean page next year and let our boys do the talking on the field. The Huddersfield field is done and dusted and I paid the fine and we move on. Now I, I don't know what they're bloody going to do with the Hulk AR game. I mean, I'm the number one exhibit. I run on the pitch before anybody else, so I can't bloody deny it, can I? When I put a big fat check there, uh, exhibit. Right, guys, I... I'm sure I've answered some of your questions, but not all. So please feel free to ask me any questions you like. Sorry, can I can I take this guy? Then I'll come back to you later. Yeah, I think you've made mistakes, but one mistake you haven't made, and we aim at this ground, but we've got to make it work. What just what is the title with the stadium? I mean, could we just go what did what did the other what did the last um, owners sign up? How long have we got to be in? Right, I mean, it's a long, uh, I think it's a 10 year deal that I've inherited. I've been negotiating with the stadium company and they've been good. I think the deal we put this year or this year coming would have been great, right? Once they agree to it, it's not being fully agreed to it. But I think that what hinders us from being here. It's the collapse of the bridge, you know, across the, the water. Because I think once that up and running, it will make life a lot easier for you guys to come into the stadium. Because you could easily take public transport into the traffic center or the ski slope and walk from there to here. I reckon not having that bridge open, and the promise that was going to be open in 2015, not having been open this year, it's going to cost us about 1,500 francs every game. Believe me, that's the real cost. Uh, but it's something that we have to work with the council, we're going to go back to the council, we're going to go back to the state and company and say, to the guys, look, you know, this is unworkable. You know, we're losing an awful lot of money because of, of the bridge and the stadium being inaccessible, etc. We have to make it work. We have no alternatives. At present time, we have no alternative. You know, I'd love to be able to say yeah, there is a stadium in the heart of Salford where our fans are and to play there, but it's not there, mate. Okay, does that answer your question? Say, mate, I need to take this guy. You said before that the million pound game, you're only losing two players. So, can you confirm now that King Louis is stopping? King Louis? Rob Louis. <laughs> Mate, Rob Louis is not going anywhere. He's not going to need for sure. But I assure you, he's contracted and constant contact with him and he's looking forward uh, to coming back and sitting with me and talking about a longer term deal. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a quick one there, going back to the stadium. Yeah. When I was at school a long time ago, <laughs> the, um, there was like three kids giving out to tickets, three tickets giving out to kids. And okay. And like, bring, the kid comes along for nothing, but bring an adult with you. Okay. Is it kind of worth looking at something like that? Well, in addition to working with the RFL, I'm working with Super League, and I'm hoping, uh, you know, we'll be working with the foundation as well to promote rugby league within schools. Each school in the south of the Manchester area is going to have a player as an ambassador. So we're going to go into schools, right? And I said it once or twice on Twitter. We're going to bloody market the club like we've never done before. So every school we're going to go to, we're going to exactly do what you've suggested. Kids, bring your parents in and come in. Right, so we're going to do the, things like that. And Super League, the Super League. Um, I met the general manager last week, and they promised to help us in our efforts there. So we're going to be talking, taking with us rugby balls there, 
uh, to promote you know the, the rugby taking videos to show how the kids how rugby is going to be play, you know is played and you know just imagine having junior sal as your ambassador going to see you once a month and so on that's what's going to get the kids excited about coming to us my opinion that's what it needs it needs the kids draw the kids into it I totally agree with you, mate. I, I totally agree with you. Yes, can I just take the gentleman here, then I'll come back to you. Uh, yeah, you're just touching on the subject I'd like to approach, um, which is the marketing of the club, which is absolutely essential to the success. Have we got a, a strategy in place that can make the performance to be a super force in terms of attendances? The fixtures are out. We should be able to look in to get the 10,000 fans that were at the Willows against the Castle Hall in 2011 back to this stadium on a regular basis. We need to do this. A, we're a Super League club, we're playing championship attendances. And the other thing is, we've got to look at how other sports clubs around the United Kingdom market their product. We're not in competition with these people, but I know there's a skill set in this room that would dearly love Salford to our 10,000 supporters every home game, regardless of how many Wigan, St. Helens bring, we've got to up our support base. I, I, I fully agree with you, mate. And two or three days ago, I, I did uh, put a tweet out saying that I'm here not just to answer the questions about the academy, etc., but to also find ways in which we, you know, explore new ways to find, you know, to market the club. Have we marketed the club correctly in the last three, four years? No, we haven't. Had we had any strategies at all? No, we didn't. Next season is going to be different. My first step is to, to ensure that the core fans are come back again, i.e. the 1600, 1700 season ticket holders come back again. Starting, I would say probably mid-November on, onwards, we will start implementing a new marketing strategy. That marketing strategy, there's a number of people here in this very room who are very capable and have fantastic ideas on what needs to be done to market the club in Salford and the areas around here. But for once, we could also call upon the experience of Super League. They're marketing people, people who are involved in marketing the World Cup as well, who are involved in marketing the Four Nations, and they genuinely want us to, to market, um, and actually they have targeted three games in which we're looking to bring in between eight and 10,000 people to those games. The first game being the weekend game, they're going to do the uh, second game, I think, Wellington. And I think the third game, either St. Helens or Wakefield down the line. But I'll, I'll be fighting with this. So we will have that um, help from Super League. We need to get the marketing strategy in place. I need the help of some people around the room who already volunteered that they will help. And I think together, this club needs to be marketed like no other time, like never before. Okay, we just, everybody, for this club to succeed, we need to be talking about having not three, four, five thousand people. We need to be talking north of eight thousand people. Okay, the, 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 okay. I think we all appreciate the fact that yeah, we do need to have a successful team playing on you know and competing, uh, but we also need to market the club. 
we need to have seven, eight, nine thousand people attending on a regular basis. And I do appreciate that the club will bring it bring in its marketing people, but at the end of the day, we will need your help in doing the marketing with us and to come up with ideas. Now, in my first open, you know, the first thing I said in this meeting, this is going to be a monthly meeting. Monthly meeting for everybody to question officials of the club, but to also make suggestions. That fans board you mentioned, I felt at the time that maybe the map with that, you know, was it right? And maybe we shouldn't just listen to 12 fans. We should listen to everybody. This is why open forums like this, where all fans are invited, come in here, come up and suggest, make suggestions, right? And the club, after all, we all want the bloody same. We want the clubs, you know, our club to be bigger. Yes? Sorry, can I just take? Yes, sir. No, not the club, it's bloody me. <laughs> Sorry? I was being polite. <laughs> so, the thing is, if, if a lot of the things like tonight's meeting, why did we advertise that on the website? And lots of other things advertised on the website. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then I, I take your point, and I fully agree with you, mate. You know, I fully agree with you. We can't rely on Twitter. Especially if I had a few glasses of wine, I mean, I could say, oh, bloody hell. No, no, you are absolutely right. Not everybody on Twitter and um, or on social media. And we need to be communicating with our fans through the website, even through, you know, sending a letter. I agree with you, mate. And that's what I'm saying to you. It won't be just on Twitter. Like, for example, last week, yeah, we had, uh, you know, we put the season ticket offer out, etc. And the only way, we done, you know, the only announcement we made through is on Twitter. Then I asked the club a couple of days ago to make sure they either send an email or to send a letter out as a reminder to everybody. So we're not, no, I take your point, and I, you know, I fully appreciate but that's a mistake we've done in the past, but it's something that we can and we need to address for the future. If you go on most, most of the club websites, <coughs> on. if you go on the website, make sure it gets on the website. Well. Yeah. No, no, I agree with you, mate. So, well, well, the stock out here behind a poo processing plant and a broken bridge, three or four miles from the heart of the city where areas where everybody comes from. Yeah. Would you not agree to go forward? We need some sort of base, whether it's a small retail unit or a sofa shopping city, which wouldn't cost an arm and a leg as an investment, where there's somewhere clients can get to easily, whether they want to buy tickets, whether they want to buy lottery, whether they want to buy merchandise, somewhere that's in the community, not out of the way where it's... No, no, I feel it. And I, you know, I don't want just to say I agree with things, and I genuinely agree with that. And I've already started the process of asking our sponsors to give us a unit in the Lowry, uh, in the Lowry outlet, the Lowry outlet, yeah. So hopefully, a shop there would be absolutely because most of our fans are within an easy reach there, and they do go into it, right? And um, I'm hoping that could be actually up and running way before our first go, uh, our first game. And again, I mean, the idea with that is it won't be just a retail unit, right? You will have our marketing department based there, okay? We'll have merchandise there to sell, but we will always, you will always be able to buy tickets from there as well, right? Now, I'm talking about tickets. Um, we're going to end up the, end this process whereby if you buy a match day, you're going to end up paying five pounds more than. Yeah, it's two pounds this year. Two pounds? This year. 